Hi, I'm Michael, and I'd like to welcome you to our community, a community in Southern California with a center located in beautiful Santa Barbara. We're a community of thousands, students, teachers, clients and volunteers, people from all walks of life, people like you and people like me, and people who face the daily challenges of diminished sight. In 1919, Robert Atkinson lost his sight in a hunting accident. Robert didn't allow his own sight loss to keep him from enjoying his life to its fullest. Instead, Robert went on to found the Universal Braille Press with the conviction that those who were blind and visually impaired could lead active, confident, and independent lives. Almost 100 years later, the Universal Braille Press has grown to become the Braille Institute of America. Today, Braille Institute Santa Barbara carries on Robert Atkinson's legacy, helping those of us who are blind or visually impaired to prevail over challenges, gain self-sufficiency, and realize our dreams. So there's a lot of fear and uncertainty, but yet that determination helps them to cope with a problem that keeps their life busy and meaningful despite the blindness. This is what I thought, that it's just for blind people who do nothing but just sit around and, you know, feel sorry for themselves. And Because I, in my family, we had never known anybody who was blind. I lost my eyesight in 1985. My whole personality had changed. I was just really depressed. I stayed at home for nine months. I just wouldn't leave the house because when, you're, when you can't see, it, everything's kind of scary. So my best friend just brought me here, and she just left me here, you know. She just left me here. God, I thought that was so rude, and I was so upset about her doing that to me. But then once I was here, I found, wow, all of these people, they, they feel exactly the same way I do. The people here are just so great. And the students... I mean, just to see their happy faces and see the social part of, of Braille, I think, is so wonderful. And the classes, which I try to really emphasize, this is a class where we want to be social, but we also want to create something and, and build our confidence with, with our projects. I could see after several classes, their confidence was just so much better. And it was so much easier for them to come in the, the door and say hello to everyone and, and just feel very welcome. My first connection to Braille Institute in Santa Barbara, that happened when I was about 11 or so. I've been on their river rafting trips several times where we take a trip to the north, I think it's the mid, middle fork of the American River. And they also have a really good rock climbing trip that I used to go on when I was in high school where we go down to Joshua Tree and we actually go rock climbing there in the uh, National Park. We have developed quite a good curriculum for people with low vision and one of my favorite classes that I uh, teach is called sensory awareness and during a sensory awareness class the student would be asked to get in touch with all of the senses that are remaining and so when we ask them to get in touch with their senses they're able to focus more on the senses that they do have and it helps them uh, a lot. We have close to 70 classes here that we teach at Braille Institute, and they run the gamut from independent living skills to live independently in the home, everything related to the domestic sphere, whether it would be cooking or how to do your laundry with diminished vision. Um, our cooking classes are quite popular, from um, Asian cooking to diabetic cooking and international vegetarian cooking, um, knife skills, you know, just very basic things to gourmet cooking classes. We also have a wonderful adaptive technology program where we teach 15 computer classes a day, whether they be um, how to use Zoom text to something called JAWS, which is a program where it actually um, speaks to you as you type. Um, wonderful arts classes, ceramics, basket coiling, basket weaving, watercolor painting, physical education classes every day of the week as well. We have a golf class, very popular golf class. We teach darts here. I think the sense of community is first and foremost what brings people not only to Braille but keeps them coming back. A lot of our patrons might be scared to come to see what we have to offer at first. We 
are patient with them. We give them the time they need, uh, the services that they want at their own pace. But we're always here for them. We are available for anyone who needs it. And we're a nice group of people to, to, to hang out with. <laughs> The volunteers are fantastic. My wife's a volunteer. We have a big variety of people that come to Brown. And it helps all of us. And I've met such wonderful people here. Stiff and that cute will keep on centering it for you. I have met more amazing adults and elders here than I ever expected. It's very, very welcoming to, to me, especially being a volunteer. You feel like you're going to be giving something uh, when you realize that really hey, they, they give you so much more. I need to be here and it's, it's, I feel it when I'm not around, when break time's around and nobody's cooking for me on Wednesdays. <laughs> it's, you know, you start to miss the relationships you form and you see these people in town and they're amazing. I had macular degeneration, which started when I was in high school, and by the time I was in my mid-twenties, I was legally blind. And um, I have peripheral vision, which is normal, uh, but my central vision, which gives me detail, is gone. I was actually at my ceramics class at Braille when Adelaide, my friend, um, came in from her golf class, and I thought, golf? I mean, <laughs> you got to be kidding. How can, how can a blind person play golf? Uh, but I was up for it, so I joined the class and really enjoyed it. And my husband said, well, if you're taking up golf, I'll take up golf, and then we can do it together. So since then, we've, we're golfers, and we've played all over the country, and um, I've played in blind golf tournaments, and uh, it's, been, it's been a lot of fun. Da, there we go. Over the length of time I've been here, about nine years, what I have noticed, it really is, in a sense, a community. I believe that's why people are happy here. They feel cared about, and they are able, in return, to, to give caring. It's just amazing what they have to offer, and they have something there for everyone. It's, it's just unbelievable. And I don't go there to learn to read with the dots. I learn to read books and then discuss them and enjoy them, you know. Braille Institute, it's just wonderful. I can't say enough about it. Braille is a place of, of refuge and a, a, pra a place of jumping off and new, doing new things, learning new things. And uh, I'm so thankful that we have Braille Institute here. So, what do you think? A lot of people, a lot of needing, a lot of helping, a lot of learning, a lot of growing, a lot of caring, and a lot of successes. You know, there are thousands of people throughout the Tri-Counties who are experiencing some form of vision loss. But this loss may not be a barrier to leading a fulfilled and independent life. Now, we realize there are going to be challenges. Challenges to grow, challenges to change, challenges to learn new skills. But we are here to help you meet those challenges and to discover there are virtually no limits to what you can achieve. I'm Michael Lazarovitz, Regional Director of Braille Institute Santa Barbara. Come by and see us. I'd be happy to show you around. Braille Institute is a recognized leader in education, training, and comprehensive services for blind and visually impaired people in Southern California. Come and visit us at the Braille Institute, and let's rediscover the world together.